Hey everybody, this is TJR. I'm here at the 2019 NAMM show. I'm here with my arch nemesis, Robert Kinsler. And of course, we also have with us a gentleman that we found uh, in the bathroom somewhere. We did, yeah. Yes. Uh, no, this is Bob by request, who's a, an exceptional photographer whose photographs you'll be looking at. Uh, during this particular video here and uh, we invited him for his perspective too. We're going to talk about the fact that Gibson is back at NAM. A year ago Gibson was conspicuously absent. A year ago pretty much every YouTube blogger and myself included did a video that asked what's the future of Gibson? Is it over for Gibson? Is this the end of Gibson? And um, they're back now. Three months ago, a new CEO came in to the fold. His name, James Curley. He, he, and he's been telling people, call me JC. JC. The amazing thing, I think, first of all, is that he's, he is here. The CEO is here. I can't remember a time when the CEO of Gibson was ever there personally at NAM. And if he was, he, I don't think he ever made himself known to the general public. Um, Robert, I'm going to pass the mic to you and let you elaborate from there. Yeah, so last night, uh, NAM had a, a tremendous kickoff to the 2019 NAM show. So Gibson, um, I guess they rented out the, Gro the City National Grove of Anaheim, which is a major venue not far from here, hosts many big shows. And he kind of introduced the night, pretty much. Uh, JC did that. And there was this parade of stars, and you could see that all these major artists whether it was Billy F. Gibbons, Peter Frampton, they're all acknowledging what Gibson guitars have meant to them in their career and the sound of the, and it was very exciting. But yeah, you got the sense that that Gibson is really back this year, big time. And I know um, uh, we were all there, and, and Bob has probably some perspective too, but I, I don't know what, did JC look pretty excited to you? He did to me. What do you think, Bob? Well, I've seen JC a couple of times already this weekend, or this week, and uh, every time I see him, he's just, happy as all get out I can't believe it um, the place feels like family again you know which is really nice about Gibson Gibson we used to go to the Gibson booth earlier you know in the past years it's a little stuffy you know I thought that they were a little bit too big for their britches maybe at the time and now it's gone back to being uh, family like you know they're, so they're the people that actually work at Gibson are sitting in in their booth and they're they're carving guitars and they're winding pickups and and talking about the business and it's really cool and they're all really excited about being there and I think it's great and and that, that seems to be the story for the whole thing about being back at NAM. Yeah. so great um, I should point out that the day prior to the first day of NAM, we're, we're all looking back on the first day which was yesterday mm -hmm. but the day prior there was media day mm -hmm. and Gibson had a booth there which I've never seen them do before and media day is very small it's a very small event, a very intimate event, and the CEO said, hey, everybody, came out there and said, hey, everybody, I'm JC, mm -hmm. and we want to introduce the new Chuck Berry, officially licensed Chuck Berry guitar by the Chuck Berry estate, and he introduced uh, Chuck Berry's son and his grandson, and they played mm -hmm. on these guitars, did a little, little bit of playing for all of us, and it was very low-key and very kind of like, you know, we're here with you. I mean, that was the first thing I noticed was, first of all, he was there, this new CEO who came in three months ago. And we should say a little bit about his background. Uh, he had come from previously working at Levi Strauss. And he has had this past history of being somebody who takes a company like Levi, well-known company, but has, has not been doing well lately and has kind of like reinvigorated the brand, brought them back to where they need to be. And he has this advantage that he was not part of leadership during that darker period of, of previously. He doesn't uh, have that baggage. He doesn't have the baggage. And, and, and there was a sense, you know, not to interrupt you, but there was a sense that, like, uh, I think historically, like, you, not any NAM goer could just walk into the Gibson booth. You had to either be a dealer, you had to be invited or something. I think that was this, the, the sense. And if I misspeak here, I, I apologize. But that, I think, was kind of the sense, and it's very different now. Um, you're right. There were, there were some years where you could not go into the Gibson booth unless you had an invitation or you had a special VIP pass. And here now, it's kind of like, hey, we're, it, 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 he was very making his message very clear. We are here for the people. We're here for you. We're, you know, we're, 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 you know, 
he he and he addressed it in the the show last night where he said you know um let's put it out there last year was a bit of an obstacle course for gibson i don't know if you noticed <clears throat> that's time to pivot this obstacle course we've been on at gibson into the opportunity course for the future and that's what i'm here to try to do so, and he's basically saying i want to turn it around and i hope you will give us that chance is kind of how he's doing it and yeah he threw a really big party last night yeah. to say that yeah. um you know to all these people and not just to musicians but also to music retailers and there were you know, like i said a year ago you can find plenty of videos about people talking about how gibson was becoming known for making overpriced guitars that don't deliver on that price when you could get much better value for your money buying another brand mm -hmm. Uh, or buying a European knockoff that does it better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's, like I said, there was this real, you could tell he was really making this mission, sta mission statement. We are approachable. I'm approachable. You know, I'm one of you. You know, he said, I'm the, I'm the, head, I'm the head guitar tuner here at the company. <laughs> and I'm working my way up the ranks is how he put it. You know, so he's just trying to be as open as he can. Uh, I think it's a good strategy, uh, but here, I'll let you go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, you know, I don't know if I have a lot more to say. That I, I'm looking, and I know you two have had a chance to go up to the Gibson booth. Yeah. After we're done shooting this episode, I'm looking forward to going up there. I did, I did see, uh, see the Media Day affair where, where Gibson was there. I saw that. And then also, I was at the, we, all three of us were at the Gibson uh, a NAM Jam last night, which was amazing. And I, I want to make sure we let, hear from Bob, too, because he was right in the pit all night. It, it, the, the event ran about three hours, and, and an amazing number of artists, some of whom I'm sure had never performed together on stage before. And so, some really magical moments, I think, happened. I don't know if... Why don't we, do, should we segue and talk? Let's. We'll start with you, There's Bob, and yeah, and then we'll get back to Tim maybe to talk some more about Gibson. But let's talk a little bit about the jam last night because I think that did set the tone for the show. Well, I'm going to go back to media day because I went upstairs after everybody left, and they had another little party up there which we got into, and the berry the berries came back out. And they played. They played Johnny Be Good, and oh, it was, cool. and it was fantastic. And and they talked about it. And and uh, Chuck Berry's son actually, you know, got quite emotional about that guitar again. You know, he held it out and showed everybody and thanked Gibson and asked him if he could have one, and take it home. You know, but it was it was a lot of fun. And then last night, I mean, I my head's still spinning from last yeah. night. It was just. Um, things I've wanted to photograph that I got to photograph last night and and the you could tell everybody was having fun that was like one of the things that came across is like sometimes um, musicians get together and they're kind of elbowing each other's way you know because they're because we're all you know we're all trying to you know have our piece um, they weren't doing that they were smiling and they were playing and they were having a great time, and I think that was the whole thing about last night. It was fantastic. Like I said, it felt like being at home at somebody's basement, somebody's garage, you know, and we just had a blast. Yeah. That's, that's, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah what, tell, what were some of the highlights of last night for you, TJ? Oh, you know, there were numerous highlights. Uh, Robbie Krieger of The Doors, you know, I'm sure the same as you, Peter Frampton. And there were some new artists that I'd never heard before whose names are escaping me at the moment. What about Emily Wolf? Emily Wolf. Emily Wolf, who was amazing, yeah. yeah. And whose album comes out in February that I want to check out now after yeah. just watching that performance. Um, and who was the duo that was the guitar and the drummer? Uh, Black Pistol Fire, yeah. An amazing, electrifying performance. The guitar uh, guitarist was so electrifying on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who says rock and roll is dead just has to go watch this guy play. Yeah. Um, but, but one thing I do want to go back to was just the atmosphere at the booth was one of, please try out these guitars. Mm -hmm. Here are all these guitars set out here. Please feel free to sit down, play them, check them out as long as you like. It reminded me very much of how Taylor Guitars sets up their booth, has done it for years, where yeah. they've made it this very inviting, welcoming place. Please sit down, be comfortable, try out some of these instruments. So, you know, it's clear this guy has looked at, I, I, it's clear that he's looked at all the complaints. I'm, I'm sure he's watched all the YouTube vlogs, all the social media vlo blogging about the complaints about this company that has had a legendary status and has probably rested on its laurels for too long and has said, okay, I've, I've, I've watched everything here and I'm going to address every single one of these things and I'm going to prove different. I like that about his approach. 
And now let's just see how the new line of guitars are, yeah. you know. And so that's all I want to say. I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything else yeah. beyond me. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to say just really quickly about the performances last night. I agree with you. It was really amazing to see uh, Billy F. Gibbons, who I've seen in ZZ Top. And, and, and he's just so iconic and such a great, and you could see his love of the blues, love of music, but I just love the way he was reaching out to the young artists. There was a couple teenage guitar heroes, you know, future stars in the making, and he was so welcoming. It was neat to see that celebration of, of not only just Gibson guitars and their instruments, but also just the love of making music. And, and for someone that goes to as many concerts as I do and you do and Bob does, goes to, it's, it's, it, I found this just a, a great celebration of music. And also I think that, that if that kind of infectious spirit goes into Gibson's future marketing and their branding or rebranding of their company, I think that's only going to be a great thing. Yeah, I'd agree. Yes, I'd agree. Uh, anybody else want to add anything else? Are we all good? Please. The, the one thing that you just said about, uh, about Billy Gibbons and welcoming these, these young players in, um, I've seen too many times lately where these kids that are 12 and 13 and 15 come out and play and they're just amazing. They're, 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 there's something about them, you know, they've got it from the soul. And they come out and they trade licks with somebody that's been around for a long time and, and when it's all said and done, they weren't real happy, you know. They, they kind of like, why did you bring this kid out to show me up? Instead of going... The, the, the thing's in good hands, you know, the music, the future of the music's in good hands with these kids that are coming up because they got it, you know, and, and I just like to see more guys that are doing that. I think that, that, was, that was a fantastic thing to see last night. Yeah, true. Yeah, and you could definitely see that in how Billy Gibbons was handling everything on stage because by the time he got out there with all those other guitar players, he was being the ringleader at that point, and he was, and he was very happy. Yeah. Yeah, it was a party. It was it was just a big party. So, like I said, it was. I've seen you know when he does his easy top. Not saying he you know he has his persona and he's just one of the coolest guys on the planet. You know he's also was a star on Bones and stuff. He's just a cool. Guy. But this was a different side of of Billy Gibbons than I had seen. Right. But it was a great side. It's like hey, this is about the music. It's not just about me being a rock and roll hall of fame legend or anything. It was just and same with Frampton. Like the way that he's like smiling like at Frampton. Hey, you take the lead and stuff. Yeah. It was so cool yep. you know very cool so anyways um i think i think we're we've we're all done yeah and um like i said unfortunately you know like i said for, if you were there if you were there let us know your thoughts please share with everybody and um it's going to be interesting to see h how gibson turns things around i think they're off to a good start let's see how they turn things around uh for 2019 and but i wish them well i hope I really, after, after, even after just, I briefly met the CEO, just all I did was shake his hand and said hello. But after seeing him talk, I really do hope now that he will turn this company around and deliver. And I, I, I know he has every intention. I, and I, I really hope he can, he can just pulls it off and reestablishes Gibson as the, as, as the brand that it is and restores its reputation. Anybody, tell us what you all think, everybody. And, uh, We'll talk to you all soon. Take Good care, everybody. Bye-bye.